Hi, my name is Chuck, and in today's craft video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make chainmail. Chainmail was used historically as a cost-effective armor against bladed weapons. Chainmail relies on the strength of interlocking metal rings to slow, turn, or catch attacks. When properly made, riveted mail was one of the most effective and widely utilized types of armor throughout the medieval period. Chainmail was worn in many different ways depending on the wealth and position of the wearer. Generally, the richer you were, the more metal your armor would incorporate. A landed knight could very well have chain links under a full suit of plate armor to protect open areas. He might even have chain and metal barding for his horse, while levied or conscripted infantry might only have enough money for a coif, a headpiece that guards the skull and neck. Today, we aren't making a full suit of armor, but simply exploring the main method of chain weaving that was used, as well as a decorative weave that can be used to make incredible chain jewelry. There are many different forms of chain weaving that all accomplish their own unique look and serve their own purpose. I encourage you to try them all if this video piques your interest. In the Middle Ages, when people needed armor such as this to protect themselves, it would be made out of iron rings that alternate between solid metal and riveted metal. However, since I don't have a forge at my desk and can't bend iron with my hands, I'm using aluminum. You can find rings online by looking for jump rings or chainmail rings in a search. You can also buy coils of wire, wrap them around a rod, called a mandrel, and cut the wire after wrapping to make your own rings. Aluminum rings and craft wire come in hundreds of different colors that can allow you to add splashes of personality to your chain weaving. As for price, you can expect a half pound of aluminum rings, like I have here, to cost you about $15 to $30, depending on brand and color. There is one more thing to keep in mind when you're buying your wire and that is aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is a way of measuring a ring's size. The aspect ratio of any ring of wire is the inner diameter of a ring, or the rod it was wrapped on, divided by the diameter of the wire that the ring is made of. My rings have an aspect ratio of 4. Certain aspect ratios are better or worse for certain weaves. If your rings are too loose, a pattern might have too many gaps to look good and slide around. If it's too tight, it might be difficult or impossible to use certain more complex patterns. While shopping for rings, your aspect ratio is very important. Take your time and research the size you'll need and make sure you get the right one. I ordered the wrong sized rings three times, so now you have an opportunity to learn from my mistakes. Since my rings are quite small, I'm not going to be using them to demonstrate. You'll still get to see me struggle with these in a bit. Don't worry. But I want to make sure you can see everything going on. And that can be hard with the smaller rings. So I'm going to start off using binder rings. In a fun coincidence, the binder rings actually have a rivet in them. You can see it right here opposite of where I'm holding it. This is somewhat similar to how historical armor rivets would have looked, although in real chain armor, the riveted ring would be flattened all the way around instead of just here to make the entire suit of armor lighter. When you make chain mail using rivets, it's called riveted mail. Suits made by squeezing the links together that rely on the spring strength of the metal are called butted mail or press mail. Press mail tends to be prettier, but is much less capable of stopping a blow. Please do not attempt to use any chain mail made by following this video as actual armor. The first pattern we're going to take a look at is called the foreign one. 4-in-1 is the baseline of classic chainmail, and can be used to make large swaths of chain. To start, you need one open ring, and four closed rings.
Now these binder rings have a nice, easy clasp that clips together. But your jump rings do not. For demonstration purposes, let's say this is a jump ring with just a cut in the metal there. To open it, you'll need to use your pliers or hands to twist the ring until there's enough space in the cut for another ring to fit through. To close it, just twist the opposite way. It helps to over twist a bit so when the metal settles into position, both ends are touching with no gap in the top. Remember though, we do need one open ring to start our pattern. Once you have four closed rings and one open, hang the four closed rings off of the open one. Then, go ahead and close it up. Congratulations! You've made your first four-in-one pattern. You may be thinking, it doesn't really look much like chainmail. That's because it gets better and better the more you make. It really starts to come together when you make more of these patterns, line them up, and stitch them together. That's what we'll take a look at next. To continue with your weave, you need more foreign ones. You can make two, you can make four, you can make a hundred of these if you want to. It's up to you how much you want to weave. When you have them all ready, it's all about getting them laid out properly. You want each patch to be in a rough square. You're looking to have one ring in each corner with one in the center holding them all together. Look for how they overlap. When the center ring goes over two and under two, you know you have it right. You should also make sure the side rings overlap as shown. They should alternate direction with the center ring. Aligning your patches can take some practice, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. If you're stuck or frustrated, give your patch a toss. It's cathartic, and sometimes it falls in just the right way. Soon, though, you'll be a pro at seeing which rings need flipped to lay it out just right. Once you've got two four-in-one patches set up in the right way, you'll need to arrange one just above the other. Make sure they're arranged in the same overlapping pattern. Here I take some more time to do it very neatly. You're looking to have the center rings going over two and under two, under two and over two. Next, you want to gently lay one patch on top of the other so that their edges overlap and they continue the pattern of alternating overlappings. You're looking for these two gaps. That's what we'll use to stitch these two together. Now you're going to take another open ring and loop it down into this gap underneath all of this and up through this gap. Be very careful not to hook onto any excess rings. Now 
Once it's through, you'll close it up and gently lay it down. If done correctly, the whole strip will be one continuous pattern. It looks easy now, and the process is quite simple, but opening and closing the small jump rings without disrupting your whole patch can be very frustrating. Take your time and be patient. One mistake can cost you a lot of time when weaving chain. Once you have your first strip like this done, stitching it to another to make a wider patch is similar. I recommend making another strip just like this one to use in that process, but 4-in-1 patches can also be attached to a longer chain one at a time on any side. Here I continue our weave by using two 4-in-1 patches to make a strip identical to the one we already made. We'll be attaching these two strips together once it's complete. Line up your two strips and lay them out so that the side rings and the center rings overlap in an alternating fashion. You want your two pieces to be touching. Next, you're looking for all of these overlaps to slide connecting rings through. For the next part of our weave, I find it best to go top down. You're going to want to take an open connector ring and go in through two, under, and out through two. Now just close that ring and lay it down. And there you have it. The more you repeat that process, the better you can see the full pattern of the chainmail starting to emerge. I'll finish this patch now to demonstrate. When you've finished with a patch, you can keep making more and more and stitching them together in the exact same way until you have your project as big as you want it. Or, you can make long thin strips for bracelets and jewelry and other such items. It's up to you what you make, and how complex you make it. Now I'll make a quick patch out of my jump rings to show you how it looks. We'll speed this part up because the process with aluminum is time consuming. When you're working with aluminum rings, it helps to keep two sets of narrow pliers nearby, as well as a set of tweezers, and maybe some gloves if you like. Whenever I start a project with aluminum jump rings, I like to estimate how many I'm going to need each of open rings and closed rings, 
then go through my stock of rings and open up and or close that many ahead of time. Doing this work now saves you a lot of time and hassle and frees up your hands while you're actually working on the project. I didn't film this entire process as it is quite tedious. Once you have your rings opened and closed respectively, and you know you have enough of them, you can begin. Start just how we did at the beginning of this video. With one open ring, hang four closed rings off of it. To make a patch out of the jump rings, you'll need to make many of these. Once you've made your 4-in-1 patches, line them all up and be ready to stitch them together. When you're ready to stitch two 4-in-1 patches together, make them overlap, find the gaps, and with an open ring go down through two, under, and up through two. With two strips completed, next you'll need to stitch them together. Get them lined up, and with open rings, find the gaps and go down through two, and up through two. So, as you can see, it is a very time-consuming process, and the smaller you make your rings, the more work it takes. This tiny patch I've made here takes the same amount of rings as the patch we made in the tutorial. When woven properly, chain mail can look truly beautiful, and in part two of this video, we'll show a decorative weave that can make stunning jewelry, the Byzantine chain. <laughs> 